out. Hmm? Yes, handout, the learning styles. There should be two pages at least, maybe three. What we just did for the last hour and 15 or 20 minutes, uh, this one plus there's another one that has a long list of things on it. It says innovative, dynamic. Let me go help me. It's um, it's that one. It's this one. Okay. So both of them. They need both of those. What we just did earlier, uh, that's normally eh, about four hours that I spend with parents that we did very shortly. So we didn't talk about the ugly stuff that our kids are getting involved in. Uh, we didn't have time to do that, and with the age mix of the audience tonight, I chose not to go in that direction. But tonight, we're going to continue for a few more minutes talking about learning styles. Now, uh, you may have gone to workshops in the past where they talked about how kids learn, and you may have talked about auditory learners, visual learners, tactile learners with their hands and kinesthetic learners. And we're not going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about a thing called the four mat system. And this very closely relates to their personality as well as how they prefer to learn. And as we teach children at church, as we teach children in school, as we teach children at home, if we are aware of how God made them, then it's much easier to teach them. It's much easier to communicate with them. Uh, life is just better when you understand learning styles and how God made them. So I'm going to run through this very quickly. We all have a dominant learning style. The dominant learning style that you and I have and that our children have is the way that we would prefer, prefer to learn when, when we, we are, are given, given the opportunity, opportunity to choose how we're going to learn. Now, now the American school system thinks everyone learns exactly the same way. The, the teacher, teacher comes in, the teacher gives you all this information, you memorize it, you come back, they give you a piece of paper, and you regurgitate all this information on the paper, and then the score on that paper says you're either a good boy or a bad boy, a good girl or a bad girl. And not all kids learn the way the American school system teaches and we, we really need to be aware of that where does your dominant learning style come from at conception how many people in the room have two or more children how many times have you said to yourself i cannot believe how different they are how different they are they're very different oh they're very different aren't they okay my 13 year old Peacemaker, gentle guy, big guy, gentle Bill. My middle child, ring-tailed tiger, troublemaker. If there's not trouble, pleasure for him is causing trouble. My nine-year-old, Summer, she's what we call the dynamic. We'll talk about it in just a moment. And she gets up in the morning and life is good. You say to her, honey, could you do me a favor? What would you like? Could you empty the dishwasher? Sure. And she looks and she says, that's not too bad. She finishes emptying the dishwasher and you say, thank you. And she says, you're welcome. Is there anything else? Wouldn't you like to have all your kids like that? Yeah. But they're not that personality. They're not that learning style. Okay. And our learning style is influenced by our parents, by experiences, and by the expectations people place on us. But we don't change our dominant learning style. So I want you to take this piece of paper, look at this first sheet, and here's what we're going to do just for our time tonight. Okay? We're going to go around the circle at them, and we're going to begin then looking at them kind of in depth. And when we run out of time, we're going to stop and we will finish tomorrow uh, with the servants because this is very important for them to understand this. Now, at the top of the page, you see the word concrete and people, people. What does that mean? 
It means that those two learning styles up at the top, the dynamics and the innovatives, and those are just titles that were given to these learners, those two kinds of learners, concrete means show me a picture, show me an example, something that I could touch, see, feel, taste, whatever, and that will help me understand the concept. Now, being people people, that simply means that they would prefer to work in a, say it, a group rather than working alone. That's the way they learn best. They learn by, you know, feeding off of and bouncing off of other people. And when they're, when they're put into a situation where they have to work all on their own, they're going to struggle until they learn that skill. They can learn the skill, but they would much prefer to work in a group. Now, the first group of learners on the top right are called innovative learners. And they're characterized by a few words. And those words are life is lived. You know who these people are? These are the people that get up this morning. They live today. And tonight they said, this was a great day, wasn't it? It's too bad the rest of you had to make it so complicated. <laughs> if you just lived today, it would have been a great day. They are also the people that learn by asking why and why not. They will say to you, why are we doing it that way? Why do we have to do it this way? Why can't we do this before we do this? Why did you go here before you went over there? That's the way they draw out information, and that's the way their brain begins to absorb. Now, my wife is this learner, and they're also characterized by the words love and heart, meaning they are the ultimate unconditional learners. They just love you because you're still sitting up and breathing. You haven't collapsed on the floor, and so they just like you. Now, my 13-year-old is innovative also. And if they walked into this room right now, and I would say, I'd like you to meet my wife and Jonathan. Jonathan's face would go completely red. He would look down at the floor, and my wife would come around and start asking her name and introducing herself. Because you see, she is an extroverted innovative, and he is an introverted innovative. But they're both innovatives. He has a giant heart, and he's an unconditional lover. Those learners are also referred to as being reflective on the far right. And that simply means that when you ask them a question in any learning environment, they want you to give them time to do what? Think. Not to think, to reflect. And they are going to reflect based on because they are unconditional lovers, they think with their heart. So when you ask them a question that they need to respond to, they're constantly saying, well, how do I feel about this? What's going on inside me? How do I feel? So when I ask my innovative something, I might say, Jonathan, how do you feel about us doing such and such? And he will almost always say, um, give me some time and I'll get back to you. Okay. The next group of people we're going to look at are called the analytic learners. Now, this is where the American school system is. The American school system thinks all learners are analytic learners. Now, the analytic learner says, I am the thinker. I'm the watcher. I learn by saying, what was that number? What was that date? What was that formula? Etc. 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 What? 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 Gathering facts. 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 And the analytic says, "I pride myself on gaining knowledge and wisdom, because I think with my, not my, heart." So now you ask the analytic a question, and the analytic says, "I need time to think about this." The analytic learner is characterized by being a non-people person and an abstract thinker. So what does that mean? It means when you ask them a question, the computer comes on upstairs and they start processing all the information and they keep processing and processing and processing. And because they're non-people people, they would prefer to work 
rather than in a group. You see the difference? Now just comparing these two learning styles right here. Can you give me some words that the analytic would use to describe the innovative? Give me a couple words. Huh? Emotional. Emotional. What else? Clumsy. Clumsy. Weak. Weak. Yes, weak. Irrational. Okay. That is what happens between those two learning styles. And when the analytic uses words like that, referring to the innovative, and the innovative looks at them and says, you are so harsh and cold. Don't you have any feelings? And the analytic says, not really. <laughs> I don't. The next group we'll talk about are called the common sensors. Now, the common sensors share with the analytic that they are abstract thinkers, so they don't need pictures, they don't need examples. The brain just comes on and starts processing. The, the uh, common sensor is also a non-people person, meaning they would prefer to work alone. But look over on the left-hand side, and we notice that the common sensor is active learner. Now, if the innovative and the analytic are reflective learners, meaning they need to think or process before they act or answer the question, what does the active learner do? Does, does before they think. think or act. So they're constantly getting into trouble. trouble. Yes, and putting their foot in their <laughs> for saying things they shouldn't say. Because if it's on the brain, it's going to get to the mouth. Sure. Now the common sense learner, they say when I'm learning, I like to do things step by step. And I'm constantly asking the question, how does this work? How does this work in real life? How does this work as a mechanical object, etc.? And they say, I like to learn by getting my hands into it. And they're characterized by the word justice, meaning that life has a long list of Rules. Yes. Rules. So they're very black and white in life. A right way and a wrong way to do things. We'll learn more about them in a few minutes. Now we go up to the top left and we look at the dynamic learners. And the dynamic learners are the people that say, hey, I love to experiment. I like to try different things and do it a different way because I'm constantly learning by saying, well, what could this become if we did it this way? What could this become if, if this person and this person and this person all got involved in it rather than one person just doing the teaching, for instance? The dynamic says, I have a lot of courage. I'm not afraid to try new things. And when I try things, I do it with a lot of enthusiasm. Sure. And they say, I'm also active in my thinking in my processing. And so the dynamics motto is what? Ready, fire, aim. It's like, let's go see what we hit this time. Sure, that's the dynamic. That's the way they live. Because it's always new. What could it become? Okay, so we have a brief intro to these people. So at the top, the dynamics and the innovatives, they are people, people. So they're going to prefer a learning environment, a work environment, a home environment, a Sunday school environment, where they get to interact with other people. The common sensors and the analytics say, you know what, I can tolerate people for a little while, but I really would prefer to do it by myself. Okay? Got the picture? All right, let's take some time and look at the innovatives. We won't get too much farther tonight. The innovative is sociable, they're friendly, they're sensitive, and what does that mean? It means that they are sensitive to what people say, how people act, how people treat them, and they are in tune with their feelings. Now, the innovative person knows they're innovative. 
They know that their feelings get hurt very easily. They know that they're people, people. And the innovative says, when, when you are working with me and you're teaching me, I need to know that I can trust you. I need to know that you're not going to um, ga gain my attention and my respect and then turn around and, and make a comment about me that would embarrass me in front of people. The innovative says, I need to build relationships with people. My life depends on having relationships with people. And the innovative says, I process everything based on how it makes me feel. Sure, how it makes me feel. Now, if you're the leader and you're innovative, you're naturally going to be sympathetic and friendly. Now, let me give an example. Let's, Let's assume, assume that, that, that you are, uh, you're, you're in a classroom, classroom you're, you're getting, getting things put out, out for, the for the day, day for the lesson. lesson. And you hear the door open up and you look and there's a child standing there and it happens to be an innovative child. Okay? You don't know that they're innovative in particular, but there's an innovative child sitting there and you're putting your things out and you turn around and you see this innovative child and you go like this, I. And you go back to what were you doing? What does that say to the innovative? I'm not important. What else? I'm too busy for you. My task is more important than our relationship. Sure. What does the innovative want? Now, when I tell you what the innovative wants, some of you, because of your learning style, you're going to be saying in your head, you won't say it out loud, that's ridiculous. Okay? Okay. If I'm doing this and the innovative walks through the door and it's a child, the innovative wants me to go, wow, it's so good to see you today. I was afraid you weren't going to be here. Wow, you look so good today. How was your week? Come over here. And most innovatives want you to say, come over here and give me a, a hug. <laughs> Definitely not innovative. <laughs> Are you married to this guy? Ay, ay, ay. Thank you. The innovative says, touch me. Because the physical touch says to the innovative what? What does physical touch say to the innovative? You're loved. I'm glad you're alive. I'm glad you're here. You're important. I value you. Yeah. And if you're married to the opposite personality <laughs> and he's gone for a week and comes home and gives you a handshake, kick him in the seat of the pants. I think we need to move on. I'm going to get in trouble. The innovative says, I learn best by listening. They know they are good listeners. And they're willing to sit and listen to you. But after they have listened to you, their expectation is that you will listen back. So they learn by listening and sharing. Now, sharing is the Christian word, as my kids say, for yakking, <laughs> for talking. Yeah, because the innovatives love to talk. They love to be with other people and talk, 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 talk. That's why we take two cars to church every Sunday. So my wife can stay and talk, 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 talk if she wants to. We used to take two cars to church every Sunday. I could leave my wife. I could go to the grocery store, buy lunch, go home, prepare the lunch, and it would be cold by the time she got home. But she said, you know what? I absolutely love that. I love having Sunday after church to spend time with my friends. Sure. The people I love. So they say, listen to me. I'll listen to you. And after I have listened to you, give me an opportunity then to talk back. 
They also say that they learn by starting with what they know and see and then build on it. They need the big picture. When they come into when I when I do a classroom on uh, Sunday mornings, I always start by saying, "Okay, this is where we're going today." Okay? Sunday morning, I will go in, I will see even the first and second graders. I will say, okay, guys, kids, we're going to be talking about a book called First John. And we're going, to, we're going to do it, and I'll tell them the things that we're going to do. So that the innovators are saying, ah, oh, I know where we're going. Now you have made me feel comfortable. Yes, thank you. Now I'm comfortable. My innovative 13-year-old every night when I, if I go to bed before him, no, but if I put him to bed and go in and say goodnight to him, you know what he says to me? So, what are you going to do tomorrow? Why does he do that? Because I want tomorrow's big picture tonight so that he's comfortable about tomorrow. If I said, I'm going to get you out of bed and uh, work your fingers to the bone, <laughs> he wouldn't like that. Say, well, I'm probably going to get up and go to my office. I'm going to work in there. I'll talk to some churches, and then uh, I'll have lunch with you. How's that? Well, that's okay. That's good. See, so he wants that big picture. And the innovative says, show me the big picture. Show me the big picture. Because that is what makes me feel not only comfortable, but it makes me feel secure, and it builds a relationship of trust. Because you've told me what we're going to do. I'm comfortable. Then you do it like you said we were going to do it. Now I know I can trust you. Okay, That's, That's the innovative. innovative. The, the innovative, as, as a teacher, if I'm innovative, innovative and I'm the teacher, teacher I, I will naturally be supportive and nurturing and friendly and sympathetic. So now if I'm the teacher, I'm putting things out. out. And, and the, the door opens up. up. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter what learning style, style comes through the door, door does it? it? Because, because I'm going to say, wow, it's so good, good to see you. Come, come over here. here. Look, Look at those boots you're wearing today. Where did you get those? And I'm, I'm going to go over and I'm going to touch that child. child. Because, because that, that would be who I was as a person innovative. Okay? Now, you know what happens then for the innovative doing that? Then the next child comes in. They do the same thing. Next child comes in. And pretty soon it's 20 minutes after start time. Say, oh my goodness, I was up here putting things out. I'm sorry. I've got to get back up here. Because relationships are more important than tasks. Relationships are more important than tasks. And so they have a tendency to be unorganized. They have to learn that skill. But they have a tendency to be unorganized. The innovative parent will say things like, dishes, do the dishes. Why should I do the dishes? There are clean dishes in the cabinet. I can spend this time playing with the kids. That's the way the innovative thinks. I'll do the dishes when there are no more clean dishes. Why should I do dishes? The innovative about bedrooms will say, bedroom, clean the bedroom. <laughs> we could be playing instead of cleaning the bedroom. We'll clean the bedroom after we've had fun. Sure, sure. Because you see, the innovative sees relationships Far more valuable than tasks or rules or things. Is there any book we can read to learn more about those episodes? Yes, ma'am. It's called Learning Styles. And it is by... You. No. <laughs> I wish, because it's an expensive book. No, it's Learning Styles. It's by Marlene, M-A-R-L-E-N-E. -E. Last name... Capital L, small e, capital F, E, V, E, R. Go on Amazon. I told a lady last weekend, she emailed me, and she said, I found it on Amazon. It's normally like twenty nine ninety five. She says, I found it for $3. And she says, I found one for $0.79, cents, but I decided to splurge and spend 3 bucks." <laughs> so you can buy it on Amazon. And now she doesn't, she does all of this, but she also does modalities, you know, tactile, visual, and she does right brain, left brain, and then she has sections for, for churches, uh, like uh, if you're a music leader, do these kinds of things. So it's, and then there's also a questionnaire in there that you can answer, and it will guide you to what your learning style is. But after you've 
What you do is, if you do that, you have someone else answer it about you first. Because we have a tendency to answer questions about how we do things so we come with these scores based on what we want to be, not who we are. You have to take this thing like three times before you really start getting honest. And then your spouse or your kids will say, you are not like that. Okay? Um, listening and sharing. Remember I said the innovators like to talk? For years, I thought my wife had someone living in her closet. Because every day when she got up to get dressed, what did she do? Who did she talk to? Herself, about what she was going to wear. And I went in one day, I said, who are you talking to in here? She says, I'm talking to myself, leave me alone. I said, I'm leaving both of you alone. <laughs> okay? Remember I said that the innovative learns by saying, why and why not? So my wife and I were driving up the road one night, and I'm very strange. I like to guess what time it is. I might wake up in the middle of the night and say, I think it's 2.18. And then I'll look at the clock and see how close I am. So we're driving up the road, and my wife was there, and I said, uh, I think it's 8.26. And she says, and you have a weird mind. Why did you say that? I said, you know, honey, there are some things in life that don't have a why to them. And she says, and why are you talking to me that way? To which I wanted to say, why not? But I did not. So you have kind of a picture of the innovatives. And the innovatives say to us, these are the things that I enjoy. Now, I want you to read this list because tomorrow, if, we, if you don't know what some of these things are, we need to address that so that you know what each of these methodologies are. They like small groups. That's pretty simple. Why do they like small groups? Because they get to interact with other people. Sure, and they get to talk. They like mimes because that's expressive. It's creative and expressive. They, like, they love role plays. And they, they often like to be in dramatic presentations as an actor. Because they love being expressive. That's fun for them. They like team games rather than individual sports. Sure. Because you see in a team game, typically no one person is singled out. The spotlight is not on this one individual. So they would prefer team sports. They might prefer, if they're an introvert, team sports, but sit on the sidelines and watch all their friends play and cheer them on. Now, my Jonathan, who's tall, 13, he was doing something the other day, a questionnaire, and I, I did some holy eavesdropping. I looked at his paper, and it asks, what, what uh, sports do you like? And he said, basketball. Well, he likes basketball, but guess what he does? When he goes to youth group, we have a, we have a basketball court in, inside the building, the back of our church. And he goes in, but, but he, he watches, watches his, his friends, friends play basketball. basketball. And, and he's, he's giggling, giggling and he's laughing, and he's, he's, he's cheering them on. But I don't know if he would ever jump into, into the game and play. Because, because he's, he's afraid, afraid if he makes a mistake, someone, someone might make fun, fun of him and consequently hurt his so he would rather stay out of the game and watch rather than jump into the game. Now that's not true of all innovatives. An extroverted innovative would jump in the game and if they made a mistake, they would just laugh at themselves. What big deal is it, see? Okay? They like to do artwork because it's expressive and brainstorming means that they get to think out loud. They like object lessons and they like visual aids. So they like all of the things that allow them to be creative and work with other people and express how they feel. Now look at the bottom, if you can, at the things they don't like. They do not like timed test because for an innovative, the timed test creates 
What did you say? Panic. Panic. Stress. Absolutely. They freak out. Sure. They decrease stress. They don't like a timed test. They would prefer do it at your own pace. If you time them, they're probably going to get a lower score than if they work at their own pace. And that just happens to be, for Jonathan, why homeschooling is so good for him. Because he works at his own pace. Okay? Now you look at that and you say, well, that's like pampering them. That's, that's not the real world. Let me tell you what his geography exam was, his final exam in geography as a seventh grader. He was given an 11 by 17 piece of paper, and he was told, draw the entire world, every continent, every country, every capital, rivers, mountains, states, etc. He missed one. He missed one. So they're not stupid people, but when they can work at their own pace, it becomes a part of them. It becomes a that's why memorizing scripture for he and I is so much fun. Because I don't force him. We memorize it together. And five years later, we're quoting scriptures that we learned five years ago. That's the way God made him. And because God made him that way, then that's the way I'm going to teach him, given the opportunity. Now, are there times that he has to do things on time? Of course there are times that you say, sorry, we don't have all day. You have to do this now. And he knows that there are times that he doesn't get to do life his way. They don't like debates because a debate can turn into an, a fight or an argument. And so what does the innovative say? When, you, when they see that, that something could turn into a fight or an argument, let me give it to you this way. Let's say that tomorrow after church, I mean Saturday, Sunday after church, you say to the innovative, Hey, why don't we go out to lunch? Where would you like to go? And the innovative says, I don't care. You choose. Why do they do that? Why do they do it? Because they are afraid if they pick, they might pick the wrong place and make you upset. So instead they say, I don't care. You choose. You choose. And they end up spending their whole life as a martyr, doing everything everybody else's way. Is that a fun way to live? Not really a fun way to live. And so they have to learn this skill of being assertive. My wife has learned it very, very well. <laughs> She's done a really good job at becoming assertive with me. Okay? But, if you say... Where do you want to go have lunch? And they're thinking, you say, come on, come on, come on. We're, we're driving past places. They're going to say, you choose. I don't care. I don't care. I said to my wife like a year ago, we were going to go to Washington, D.C. with the kids. I said, would you prefer to go in March or April when it might be a little cooler? Or would you prefer to go in July when we have more time? My wife was very busy. And she said to me, I don't know, and I can't answer that right now. And if you need an answer right now, let's not go at all. I'd prefer not go at all. I can't tell you right now. So what do I have to do? I have to back off and say, I, she's not going to answer the question right now. The innovative does not like computer education. Now hear me out. Doesn't, doesn't mean they don't like computers. They could like computers, computers but, but not, not computer, computer education, education because, because computer, computer education, education is too impersonal. impersonal. Too impersonal. impersonal. They, they don't, don't like jobs where they, they have to sit at a computer, computer all day long, processing. It's not, not fun. fun for them. But the piece, piece of paper, paper you have here, here okay, this, this piece, piece of paper, paper is revision two. two. There was, was the, the original. original and, and it, it was, was done, done on, on a, a typewriter. typewriter. Anybody know what a typewriter was? A typewriter. And I said to my wife one day, would you take this to work and would you put it on your computer so it looks better? She said, sure. This is the revision after that. 
You know why? She brought it home, and she says, look, look what I did, and I'm reading it. She says, don't read it. She says, look at the pretty border I put around it for you. Not to mention that she reversed everything. <laughs> I cut, I moved, I scotch tape, and I never told her that she did it backwards because it would have hurt her feelings. And to this day, she doesn't know that she did it backwards because she was nice enough to do it. And I wasn't going to embarrass her and tell her, you blew it. I just waited. And as soon as we got a personal computer, I redid it. She doesn't know. She doesn't care. That is not important to her. But she loves the creativity she can have on her computer. And she will stay up to 4 o'clock in the morning preparing a single letter to the parents in her children's choir group. That's got to have the pictures in the right spot. They have to be the right size. It has to be the right font. Everything has to be laid out so that it is pretty. That's who she is. All right? And they don't like the common sense learner as their teacher. Look back at this sheet of paper again. And what you notice is that this innovative learner is diametrically opposed to common sensor, and analytic is diametrically opposed to the dynamic. So the innovative says, I don't like the common sense learner as my teacher because they're non-people people. They don't give me time to think or process, excuse me, process. And they have this strict list of the way we're going to do everything. So the innovative says, I prefer not to have the common sensor as my teacher. But guess what is funny? 84% of the time, what do innovatives do? They marry common sensors. And 84% of the time, analytics marry dynamics. Because it is though where my wife or someone else in a relationship, they look at a person and where they are weak, the other person is strong. And where they are strong, the other person has weaknesses. So they're drawn to each other. And the beauty of learning styles is once we understand all four learning styles, then we work together and we complement each other. I have finally learned. In the mornings, zip it. Keep my mouth shut when it comes to the kids. Let her do it. Because I'm just going to jump in and cause trouble for the kids. Then I'm going to upset everybody. And then she has to spend the next 15 minutes doing what? Settling everybody back down so that we can get out the door. Stepping on some toes, aren't I? <laughs> I'm 67, 66. <laughs> now, I learned to step back. Do you want me to be honest with you? Yes. I learned to step back when uh, I knew that my marriage was falling apart. And I said, you know what? I have to, I have to implement what I teach. I've got to shut my mouth. I've got to let her be her. That's why we drive two cars to church. <laughs> I'm guaranteed, I'll guarantee you, Sunday morning, we're supposed to go in one car. We're supposed to leave our house at 810, so I can be there at 840, 8, 850, 855 at the latest. I will guarantee you, at 810, I'll go out and get in my car and drive to church, and she will come late. Because the innovative says, early, late, what's the difference? As long as we... As long as we get there, who cares? What's the difference if we're early or late? What is your... Just get over it. Yeah, that's why we take two cars. Okay, let's see if there's anything left on the innovatives. The innovative says, I'm going to work best in a learning environment, in the home environment. I'm going to work best when you tell me why we're doing the work. Remember the why question, why and why not? They want to know, why are we doing it this way? The reason for the work. This is why we are doing it. 
Second thing is, they say don't expect too much too soon. In other words, don't, don't rush or don't push me. Don't rush me. Because when you rush me, you frustrate me. But you know what else? Not only do they like to think out loud, but they like a regular schedule. Let's go back to think out loud. There's a funny thing about innovatives as they learn. You will notice that innovatives, when they learn to read as very young children, not only do they read out loud, but they continue reading out loud for many, many years. Because they learn by hearing what they're reading. They learn best by hearing it in their own voice, coming back into their own ear. Now, Jonathan has told you he's 13. I heard I hear Jonathan in his bedroom. When, when he's, he's going, going to do his reading, reading for school, he goes, goes into, into his bedroom. bedroom. Let's, Let's just, just pick, pick something here. here. If, if you, you were, were to sneak, sneak into his bedroom, bedroom and he, he was, was reading First John, John, you would hear this boy sitting in his bed reading and saying, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. That's where he reads to himself. Very dramatic, very expressive, because that's how he learns. There's some days I just, I stand by his door and I just, I'm laughing and laughing and laughing at this kid inside. He's sitting in his bed or he's sitting on the floor and he's reading very expressively. Is there anything wrong with that? Of course not. There's nothing wrong with that. Because when he stands up to give a verbal presentation at school, he gets straight A's because he's so expressive. They love it when he does presentations because he's so funny. He's so expressive because he's innovative. He's innovative. Does he have weaknesses? Of course he has weaknesses. We all do. So I work towards his strength. I teach him toward his strengths and then I help him develop skills. And sometimes I say to him, you're 13. This is what I'm telling you. You don't like me telling you, but guess what? You're a 13-year-old boy, and you have to learn this. And whether you like doing it this way or not, you have to do life, this part of life, this way. This you can't do the way you want to. Because let me tell you a little secret. Your friends will be making fun of you, and then you're going to be really embarrassed. Because innovatives have a tendency to be unorganized, they can be nonchalant, sloppy. They don't care if their hair is combed like it should be. Who cares? Relationships are more important than what my hair looks like. But what else does that fall over to in a child? Brushing teeth. And at 13 for a boy, putting on deodorant. And there are days that I'll say to him, I'll pull the car back in the garage. And I'll say, Jonathan, go brush your teeth again and use mouthwash, and put on deodorant. You're going to be around other people today. And he says, they don't. <laughs> I said, because they're 13-year-old boys, and they smell just like you. <laughs> Go in the house and do it again. Because the innovative says, that's not important. Relationships are more important. And I say, you're going to kill relationships with your bad breath. Okay? Have any questions about the innovatives? Because we're going to stop right there. We have three more to go. We'll do those in the morning. Any questions about innovative? Yes, ma'am. Not quantitative, but just in general, how long did it take you to notice what the style of learning was for your Sunday school? Um, you know what? That's a very good question. And I don't pay a great deal of attention to that because I have 24 to 25 kids. What I do, very good question, is I prepare my lessons so that I use teaching methodologies from all four learning styles because if I will teach you the way God made you one time during the hour, you'll stay with me. So, But I can spot them. Like there's a girl in our class, um, uh, Chloe. And the first Sunday Chloe was there, it was time to line up to leave the class to go across the hall to Children's Church. And two boys started fighting over who was going to be first. And as soon as the two boys started fighting, she went like this and started crying. She's innovative. She's innovative. So now when she comes in the class, hi, Chloe, how are you? 
It's so nice to have you today. I'm so glad you were first. Would you be, able, would you be willing to help me? Well, of course I would. But when I see things are getting out of control in the class, I try to calm it down because I can see her tensing up inside. Okay, any other questions? How long did it take me to, a good question would be, how long did it take me to identify the learning styles of my wife and my kids? And I knew that Jonathan was innovative the first time I met him. I knew that Gabriel was common sensor. And I knew that Summer was dynamic the first time she got up in the morning and said, where are my boys? Because they're natural born leaders. So, any other questions before we go? All right. All right. Tomorrow, tomorrow we're going, going to go. go I'll tell you what we'll do tomorrow. tomorrow. We'll, we'll go straight. First, first thing, we'll, we'll do analytics, analytics common, common sensors, sensors, and dynamics. dynamics. And this is important because once you see the learning style and you see the teaching methodologies that they prefer, then as you were teaching and there's a suggested teaching methodology in the curriculum, you won't be so inclined to say, that is so ridiculous, lame, dumb. I'm not doing that. See, we say that about a teaching methodology that is suggested because it's not our learning style. If I see something you know, that is very touchy-feely, okay, I might respond to it one way if I'm innovative, but I might respond to it a completely different way if I'm analytic or common sense, see? So just to give you a quick comparison, and here we're gone. I went to a church, and the adult Bible teacher for the class I was in was very strong analytic, meaning he's also reflective. So who did he draw to his class? Other reflective learners, mostly innovatives, okay? So you attract those kind of people when it's that kind of a situation. I go to a church now where the pastor of the church is about as innovative as they could possibly be. He sends out emails to the church, and his closing line of his emails to the body is, what do you think he says? I love you. <laughs> Keep going. Add to that. Em embellish it. I love you all with all my heart. That's what our pastor says. Or, um, loving you today. It always has the word love in it. Always has the word love in everything that he closes with. See, because he's innovative. So, all right. Yes, ma'am. What percentage of people? Very good. Women. 60% of innovatives are women, 40% are men. You thought they were women. 40% of innovatives are men. And that's why they don't do very well in church. Because church environment is typically not touchy-feely, relationship-based in most churches. Yeah. And across America... It, around the world, because I've done this in groups of Chinese, Germans, Filipinos, whatever. It's pretty much about divided up pretty equally, about 25, 25, 25, 25. Analytics, it's about 50-50 men and women. Common sense, it's about 60% men and 40% women. Dynamics, it's about 50-50. Okay? All right, I need to shut up. <laughs> You want to close us? <laughs>